My name's Alistair Dawson and uh, welcome to Kedron, to the uh, State Disaster Coordination Centre. I'll just give you a wrap over the last 24 hours about what's been going on in the southeast Queensland. And as you know, uh, last night there was some fairly heavy rain in the southeast corner and uh, we're expecting more heavy rain over the next uh, 48 hours, mainly south of Bundaberg. So there has been some flash flooding in and around the Gympie and uh, Miraburra areas and there is a constant watch on the heights of rivers uh, and creeks in those areas. I can advise that uh, Gympie, is the Mary River, is uh, currently at 13.84, uh, is expected to still rise a little bit further and uh, is anticipated that there could be up to 20 businesses affected by this uh, rain. We are advised though that there are no uh, residential areas at risk at this time but again that is dependent on the amount of rain that falls in the area. The Bruce Highway was reopened at Gympie at 3am this morning uh, but again could be closed today depending on the amount of rain and also the, uh, the rapid rate of uh, flash flooding. Maryborough, the Maryborough, or Mary River in Maryborough at, uh, is currently at 8.2 metres we anticipate that to go to 8.4 metres. It was predicted yesterday to go to 9. That has been revised. There are currently, and sadly, three homes with water through uh, the premises in uh, Maryborough, and three businesses have water through the premises. The marina is affected, and we are asking people that uh, have boats uh, in the Mary River, in and around uh, uh, Maryborough, to go and check their boats, if they wouldn't mind, please. The LDMG, the Local Disaster Management Group, is meeting today at 3.30 uh, this afternoon and has been monitoring the condition overnight and uh, during the day. In Rockhampton, there are still 158 people in the evacuation centres and sadly 400 homes still have water through the actual uh, premises themselves and 150 businesses are also affected. The river is currently at 9.15 metres and is steady and uh, it, it, we can confirm that the highway out of the north of Rockhampton is open, that's the Bruce Highway. It is not considered that the water levels there will drop uh, 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 in the near future, so we are still looking, uh, as predicted, uh, towards the end of the week. In Condamine, there is a large number of people assisting uh, the people of Condamine in uh, cleaning uh, the premises. There are 47 premises that have been uh, cleaned to date. But the Condamine River is expected to, to get some of the water from this uh, rainfall and uh, it is anticipated that the Condamine River will rise to 11 metres. In real terms, this means that the bridge into Condamine uh, will, be, uh, will be closed at uh, 10 metres. However, we are advised that there is still access via the township of Tara to Condamine. St George, we are advised that the river, well, the, the floodwaters around the town are currently at 13.2 metres and steady. It is anticipated that 13.4 uh, metres is uh, where they may peak. Again, it will be an elongated peak, so it will last for a few days before waters start to drop. We are advised that there are four houses that have water through the house, four houses with water under the floorboards, uh, 20 yards have been inundated, and currently 35 residents of, uh, of St George are staying with family and friends. The waters around Dirrambandi um, have reached a 5.3, which we have been told is a new high for that area, and uh, the, the, um, the town is uh, safe and is dry, and is, all the resupply issues are being addressed. Uh, yesterday, uh, three uh, males were actually rescued, or three young men were rescued from uh, Mount Kilcoy by the AGL helicopter, and we again uh, advise people about outdoor activities, especially in uh, such inclement conditions. Uh, so the rain predicted is uh, due to last for another couple of days, and we do ask people to take care whilst they are driving, especially on, uh, on roads that are subject to flash flooding, and to check with the RACQ and also the Department of Transport and Main Roads websites uh, before embarking on their journeys. One further message in regards to the roads, there's been significant damage caused to the roads around the state due to flooding. We are advising motorists that they should uh, travel at a speed that is safe for the road conditions. That may mean travelling at a speed substantially lower than the speed limit that is posted for that road. You should allow extra uh, time on your journey to cater for that and we, we would like people to show patience and consideration 
to other road users and also to the road work uh, crews that are out there trying to repair the roads. But I'd like to pass over to Warren Britson from Emergency Management Queensland. Warren. Thank you, Alistair. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. One of the major roles that Emergency Management Queensland has is to work with local disaster management groups every day about preparing their communities for what may happen to that community. There is no more important time than right now to do that because we have predictions, again, of some severe weather events happening in the South Burnett, the Sunshine Coast and perhaps down around Brisbane in the southeast corner as well. So I would like to encourage communities to be very much aware of the predictions that have been given by the Bureau of Meteorology. If I can use the slogans we're using, this current season particularly, it's about tune in to warnings. So we ask the communities out there to tune in your radio and television and listen to the warnings. If necessary and if you have the capability, log on to websites and check what the Bureau of Meteorology are saying about this severe weather prediction. Listen out to warnings that you may hear over your radio and television as well as the event unfolds. And of course to take the necessary action. And there is actions that need to be undertaken by community members now that the warnings have been issued. If you need further advice about what you need to do, what actions you need to take, log on to the websites, talk to your neighbour, ring your local council if necessary and ask what it is you need to do. You can always call the State Emergency Service on 132500 for further advice about what you need to do, what actions you need to take now that those severe weather warnings have been issued. We'd also like to impress upon our community people as well that now that it's time in some places to return back to the, the houses which were evacuated and now cleaned up to make sure that all of the safety precautions have been undertaken. This season has seen very severe weather events and heavy rain and we implore the community to listen to messages, listen to warnings, but consider this. When you hear a Bureau of Meteorology warning, for instance, that you're likely to get 150 to 200 millimetres of rain, balance that with the difference this year. This year is very different to the past. In the past, that 150 to 200 millimetres of rain in your location may have met something, but this year, with all of the catchments primed, the river's already flooding, that 200 millimetres of rain will mean something very different to you. So you need to find out what that actually means. It could mean the difference between a minor flood and a major flood, for instance. Thank you. Just about the common line, is it just the roads or is there a threat that the town might be? No, at the moment there's, uh, we're not advised of any threat to the town. Um, the people that are working there obviously uh, are doing a great job there. The threat is to the bridge, which uh, will probably close at about 10 metres but uh, we have alternative uh, access via Tara. So, uh, and there are 15 members of uh, the New Zealand Emergency Services currently working in uh, Condamine, assisting the community. Is there a bit of a moving feast in Nuremberg and you can do something faster? I mean, the Weather Bureau seems to be revising all the time. Is it one of those things that's wait and see there may be more people? It, it is insofar as that uh, dealing with the weather uh, is, all, is, uh, is a bit of a, a mystery I think uh, for long forecasts, obviously the closer it is to the event, the, uh, the more firmer the forecast can be. I think the other thing is also with hydrology, uh, we have been advised that we need the rain to start to fall so we can then get the measurements that we need. So it is a bit of a moving feast in and around the uh, Sunshine Coast. We're talking to the disaster district coordinators from Bundaberg all the way down to Logan and across to St George, uh, Roma, so the purpose for that is to get an understanding of what's actually happening on the ground uh, following the rain events. But at the moment there is localised flooding uh, in those areas, yes. Um, Waluga and um, Kilkeeve and those areas that they had that flash flood on Friday night, yep. early Friday morning, some of the people said that they feared for their lives as that water rose. Is this the situation that we're facing around that area, that as the waters rise quickly, people really need to be aware that they need to get to high ground? It, Especially that. Uh, and so far as the rainfalls uh, are currently somewhere between 100 and 200 millimetres, depending on where you are, waters will rise quickly. Uh, you may not be aware of that rise, and you should actually uh, be listening into uh, the weather forecasts and checking the road conditions as well, uh, because it will rise quickly, uh, and those places which have gone under before 
uh, especially on the road, road systems in that north coast area, could well uh, flood again uh, within, an, within an hour. So, so people need a floodplain? Well, yeah, they need to think about alternate ways to get from A to B. So if you are living in a particular area and you need to travel to a, another place, you need to think about ways to get there that, don't, that doesn't take you through low-lying areas. But again, if you don't need to travel uh, and it's pouring rain, then I would suggest that you stay off the roads because it is harder to see in heavy rain whilst driving a motor vehicle. I presume the problem is that the ground waterlogged and that's why the 100 mils to 200 mils is going to be more dramatic effect. Yes, sir. That's the message we want to give to the community through uh, you people. Don't judge 150 millimetres of rain as you may have in the past. If the ground is so waterlogged, the catchment so uh, primed, the river's so full, the creeks are all flooding, then it will mean something more dramatic than it had in the past. Do you think people are being complacent with so much rain every day? I would suggest it's probably not complacency. I think that this wet season is different to what we've been used to over the past number of years. Although we've been told for six months that this wet season was going to be quite severe, it was going to be longer than normal and there would be much more rain than normal. So I think it's just new to a lot of people, this amount of rain. Um, Warren, were you in Brisbane in 1974? I was actually based in St George in 1974. Do you remember? Was this oh. like that La Nina? Yes, very clear. I remember it vividly, and I also clearly remember what the Bureau of Meteorology said about six months ago, and that was, this year is shaping up scientifically like 1974 did. So Brisbane flooded in 1974. I mean, we spoke about this yesterday. People should be acutely aware in low-lying areas of Brisbane that that's a real possibility. I'm not a technical expert on flooding, but let me say that there's been lots of things happen since 1974, whether it be the construction of Ivanhoe Dam and many other things. I don't think we'll have another 74, but we could easily have flooding around this area, yes. So are you happy with the Bureau forecast? How they've been going? Yes. Extremely. They give us very good predictions. They are able to give us long-term suggestions of what they think the weather may be doing for us emergency managers and their forecast this season as as far as I can remember back as well have been very good yes very close to the money you think absolutely yes and these floods uh, underway at Merrimara and Gippie how do you sort of rate them are they minor or medium floods what would you think well they have various ratings for instance they obviously go from minor to moderate to major and so across that region at the moment we're hearing from the bureau that in certain places they are changing from moderate to major, for instance. But, uh, or Over to you. Do you know the letter? Sorry. So what was the question? You just mentioned that uh, some of the floods were changing from moderate to major. Yes. I just need to be more concise. Meribara or Gympie or both? I can get that for you. I don't have it right now, but I can go to the BOM uh, warning we've just oh, got and tell you. Yeah, I can. They are. They are getting the message, which is um, we're very grateful for, because obviously the road toll uh, is something that we keep a very close eye on, and it's the effect on families and communities uh, that uh, these tragedies uh, affect the most. And so the reason we're putting this message out consistently is because we're getting heavy rain on top of uh, flooded, uh, flooded roads that have now cleared, and so there is going to be debris, there is going to be some potholes, uh, the amount of uh, roadworks that needs to be done is, is, uh, is beyond really, I, I suppose, even uh, uh, what I can imagine. But there, there is an enormous amount of work that needs to be done. So we're just asking people to uh, be very vigilant and to be careful because uh, every life counts. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thanks.